welcome back to my little channel today once again i'm going to talk about transgender gender dysphoria and the destruction it wreaks on the people that are being classified as such now i've in the past mentioned on one of my gender dysphoria videos that a lot of people that have sex change operations eventually regret it and want to go back to their original sex this is however a misnomer it's a mis misunderstanding of, of reality because anyway this is a how do you call it a commentary written by walt Heyer. walt Heyer is active in the transgender community and he used to be a transgender and what makes this article so interesting is that he talks about how he went from man to woman and then when he wanted to go back he needed to have his sex officially changed because he was officially a woman he wanted to go back to men now let me show you what that brought on with him sex change isn't surgically possible my surgeon testified in court after he had the sex change operation the surgeon testified it when he wanted to go back to being a man well not i mean you want to read it go ahead and read it link will be provided walt Heyer is a public speaker and author of the book trans life survivors through his website sexchangeregret.com and his blog walthire.com hire raises public awareness about those who regret gender change and the tragic consequences suffered as a result now this is something i've mentioned once or twice as well i'm going to scroll up a little bit and i'm going to take one or two things out of it i speak out because i consulted the gender experts when i had gender confusion and they told me sex change was the only way to get relief we are pushing the idea that surgically altering from man to woman or woman to man is a solution but it's not it's never been and now we're pushing it on younger and younger individuals i mean we're even willing to give how do you call it um puberty blocking hormones to children of 10 years and sometimes even younger than that even though we know it brings serious health risks i mean osteoporosis a, a larger chance of cancer but more to the point you're being neutered well you're being hormonally neutered i mean no one has taken away any physical body parts yet but your body is being destroyed in such a way that you will never be able to make the hormones necessary to your body well you can make them in, in, in lesser volumes i guess but you won't be able to produce offspring anymore when you were if you were a boy your seed has now died if you were a woman your eggs are now useless and that's not something that's going to be repaired if you decide to go back now why is it so important i'm going to go to him again after eight years of living as a woman i finally admitted that truth to myself and fought to sought to reclaim my male identity in an effort to restore my birth certificate to male i formally asked two acclaimed experts to testify to me being male in california supreme court and this is basically the paragraph thing that yeah set it all off this patient by criteria established by john money phd at the john hopkins university school of medicine is indeed now considered a male we plead that the court will re-establish this man's legal identity as male the patient's medical sex is evaluated as followed genetic sex is male he didn't have reassignment surgery by the way his hormonal sex 
is neutered. So, neither man nor woman. His internal morphology is male. His external morphology is mixed. Why? Well, because he hadn't gone through the re-establishment surgery. And his gonadal sex was neutered. And his social sex, his gender role, is now male. Because he chose it to be male. Had he chosen to stay woman, his social gender role would have been female, even though all of the other things, the genetic sex, the hormonal sex, the internal morphology, the external morphology, and the gonadal sex, would not have changed. So basically, what these people are advocating is that if you feel you're a woman, you're a woman. Your genetic sex doesn't matter. Your hormonal sex will never be that of the other sex. If you're a man, it will never be that of a woman. If you're a woman, it will never be that of a man. But it could be neutered. Your internal morphology will be basically how you were born. Were you born as a male, then your inter internal morphology will remain male. Were you born as a female, then your internal morphology will remain female. Now your external morphology can be mixed, because with plastic surgery I can give you something that looks like a vagina. Well, not me personally, obviously I'm not a surgeon, but that is what they can do. They can give you a facsimile. Obviously it won't be completely the same, it wouldn't work completely the same. Your gonadal sex, so your balls if you're a man, or your, um, how do you call those things on the inside? I can't remember the word now. Your ovaries, eh, thank you. So your gonadal sex, your balls or your ovaries, well, they are neutered. That can't be restored. So the only thing that is easily to transmit between male and female is your social sex, your gender role, the thing you choose to call yourself. Well, but if that's all there is to it, then you didn't need to hurt these people with the hormones or surgery. Because that surgery is merely plastic, superficial, and the hormonal thing is actually what destroys their very being man or being woman. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't really have a problem with people wanting to be male or female. My problem is not that if you really feel that this is the best solution for you, after years and years and years of soul searching and professional help, I'm not going to tell you you're not allowed to do it. But my problem is with doctors who will claim it's the only solution they have, which basically was what Walt Heyer been told, and then after you decide to go back, they will tell you, well, I mean, we, we did do a few things, but you're not a woman now. You're a nothing, or an it, or... I don't know, what would be a good word? And I'm not saying this because I want to defame transgenders. I don't have a problem with them. They're the ones being lied to. And, and, and that's, that's the problem I have. And that's the one thing I can't wrap my head around. And I, I work in psychiatry. This is a real problem for me because I see this happening in my line of work. Where we now let this happen. Now... All it needs for evil to rule is for good men to stand down. And at this point in time, when it comes to gender dysphoria, a lot of good people are standing down. And this is going to be at the cost of our youth. I can't understand this. Anyway, Walt Heyer, links will be downstairs. Link to the article will also be downstairs. And... Uh, Criticism, as always, is more than welcome. Once again, I'd like to point out, this is not about transgender bashing or hating people with gender dysphoria. In all fairness, this is about caring for those people and trying to prevent them 
from making this heinous mistake that they're being goaded towards by the ones that are getting paid because the ones that are getting paid they don't care they don't care but you're going to be wrecked for life be good see you all next time